Hey, Hold on, hey, hey, baby, put that cheese down. All right? Put that Turn cheese down. down. Music. Turn down the music, please. We're getting real artistic today. Over there drinking wine and cheese. Hey, man, first and foremost, I got my dog Clayton English in here. You heard it. You already know it, man. Salvador Domingo. Yeah. Buenos dias. Yeah, you know what it is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back, bro. Yeah, man, good to be back. You're doing big things in life. <sighs> I can't even talk about them. I know it, <laughs> but I know. I can say it to you. You can say it to me. You do it. Say it with your mind. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> <laughs> this text message. Bruh, we got some very dope guests in here with us today on the Black Excellence Spotlight. Bruh, please get, introduce yourselves to the 85 percenters. So they can make sure they got it right. Cause this dude named <laughs> crazy as hell. My name's Onaje Henderson. See, when he said that, I was like, say, what name is Orange Juice? <laughs> hey, bring me some orange juice. <laughs> Onaje. That's dope, bro. Appreciate it, man. I'm Omari Henderson. Yeah. And we uh we're two-thirds of the owners of Zukai Art Gallery here in Atlanta. Love it. Yeah, so I'm Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one third of the shit that be on this show. <laughs> y'all fans, y'all watch the show. We watch do. it all the so time. So you already know, man. This is this is what we use our platform to highlight dope things that's going on in the community amongst us. And so, man, tell us more about the art business and how y'all got started and all of that. The good background story, you know. Yeah. So uh, I'll start. We. Uh, we uh, got started when we were in college. We uh, we grew up here in Atlanta. See, I was gonna let you start, but you skipped uh, you skipped so much. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't told him that's your brother or nothing. All right, yeah, this is my brother. Right. So, Who's the uh, older brother? I'm the oldest. Right. Yeah. So, so I'm the your little brother. Yeah. <laughs> this is my little brother. Little yeah. big brother. <laughs> I know. Everybody big little brother. It's big always brother. like that. Yeah. Ain't it? That's yeah. because yeah. your parents get better insurance. They have children. Who get better? Yeah. yeah. So them yeah. lands kids. Good product. Good medicine. We just had to make it. Yeah. You had to make it when you go. You need no vegetables. You your own. I'm the smallest person in my family because I'm the only one that was born on public assistance. My mama had a job with the rest of the kids. Big brother, like six five, yeah, some stupid shit. Yeah, big. He was uh, complete shack in a movie. <laughs> the little brother healthy and shit. <laughs> so, so we started. Uh, we grew up here in Atlanta. Uh, grew up in Decatur, right off Keller Road. East and, uh, side, East side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we went to school. We went to Tuskegee and uh, HBCU. Yeah, HBCU, man. So when we got to school. Uh, we both got scholarships to go to college, and when we got no scholarships, uh, engineering. We both majored in. I majored in chemical engineering. He majored in mechanical engineering. You see how you skipped so, the whole high school? How y'all was smart and shit. <laughs> we went to McNair. We went to McNair High School, and uh, when we went to college, my dad, who's also an engineer, he's an electrical engineer, and uh, who also went to Tuskegee. So did my mom. Family legacy. And so that's uh, dope enough right there, yeah. bro. That, Cause that break down so many stereotypes of what they not saying right. about shit like this. Bro. Right. Your whole family done went to college. Yeah, yeah they yeah, went there yeah. and graduated. My he, kid gonna be like, my dad went here. <laughs> <laughs> my dad said he went to fam. <laughs> my son gonna be like, this the school you quit? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you were close, bro. I, I, bruh. <laughs> I saw your transcript. <laughs> you were doing it. <laughs> 
So, uh, so when he, when, uh, when we went to college, we got those scholarships. My dad, who was an artist, decided he was going to quit his full time job and become uh, an artist. He Bro, was shout quit out his to job. your yeah, dad. Yeah. Yeah. So he jumped in. Just to be able to put your dad and be like, y'all good. Yeah, yeah. Shit, yeah. Nothing. That's exactly yeah, what he said. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's exactly what he did. Nigga, yeah. Bro, I want to paint some shit with my feet. <laughs> <laughs> I did my job. I've been working 30, so I did my job. So, y'all bro, y'all bro. <laughs> so you straight. I got to cut my yeah, toenails. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty much feet. how it happened. Yeah. So, uh, so, that's what I'm laughing at. Yeah. So, so uh, we, you know, what, what we did was he started a company then to just kind of sell his work. And yeah. when we graduated, we took over the company to sell his work. Right. And now over time we started working with other artists and I'll let you take it from there. Hold up, let me ask y'all this as a group though, like how important was it like to go to have that HBCU experience? Oh yeah. man, you can't, I you, man, I don't think you can even put a dollar amount on it. I mean, is it to be at a HBCU, to have the support that you have when you at HBCU, to have the, um, the friendship, just all the people you meet while you there, like, the people that I was roommates with when I started, I talk to them every day now. You right, know what I'm yeah. saying? So you don't you don't you don't meet people like that along the way. So that the support and they one thing they do at a HBCU man, it ain't easy. No. So they get you ready for the world. It's so they get you tangible. Yeah, like, yeah, that's what, 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 what it you, is, yeah, 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 talk to that, yeah. bro. I mean, so, bro, when I first got there, I thought I was, you know, you think you're smart, and they'd be like, all right, everybody, no calculators for the first two years, you know, <laughs> and it's like, we're going to show you how much math you don't know, yeah. you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, but I, the other thing, too, is like seeing, you still got everything you see everywhere else, they just happen to be in college. So you still got, you know, folks selling dope, you know, on campus. You got, you got all this other stuff happening. But it's just showing you the, the, just how wide of a range of black folks we exist in all these spaces. But we all can still be smart. We all can still go to school. Like, you don't have to be a certain way. Uh, whether it's like ex-gang members, everything was in the, at, at school. You know what I mean? It's like, you, it's like a black world. Yeah. And I think being around a black world and you're going against all these negative stereotypes that you've heard your entire life about you and how you're not going to survive past. I think when we were growing up, it was past, what, 20? Then it became 25. We're endangered species, all that kind of stuff. And you start seeing all this. And those same people who came, who may have came in that way, they executive companies now. Right. You know what I mean? Because HBCUs are spending time with you, too. And uh, they'll make sure you get right. So by the time you leave at the, at the end of that four years, what you used to be is not what you, not, what you are at the end. Yeah, my Man, let them see that dope-ass hoodie you got on, bro. Oh, yeah. Custodian yeah. the culture. What, explain that a little so bit. So one, uh, one of the things we talk about in the gallery um, or just in the art business in general, is that we all need to be and have a responsibility to be custodians of our culture. So when we talk about it from an art standpoint, we say that the art that you purchase today, we have a responsibility to collect our culture. Right. So we talk about collecting art, and it's our responsibility to collect that, to pass it down, to create value in it, it's our responsibility to do that. And we and, and the art's gonna outlive all of us. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna move from generation to generation. It creates generational wealth along the way. It has an intrinsic value because it's gonna mean something to you. Okay, like, okay, yeah. I have a question for, as an artist. Yeah. Where did you get your point of view? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as an artist, we all see the world in different shapes and forms. What helped shape your point of view as an artist? <laughs> The thing is, with uh, you know, with being in this in this whole space, yes, we don't want to we we want to take that stigma yes. out of art yes. that you have to think that you got to think about it like yes, that. we want but us I to I be. Like it. I like it. <laughs> it's artistic to me. I like we want it. us to be just comfortable with it and make it a part of our daily life. It is, you know. So it is the the way we kind of cultivate that is we say we all want to be these custodians of culture because while we're here on the planet, we have a sp responsibility to own our culture. Right, right, if right. we don't, we don't pay somebody else to go and see it. That's what's and happening so, now. Most yeah. of the stuff you think about when it comes down to people collecting work right now, African-American work is not being collected by us, it's being collected by everybody else. So what happens then is that, what typically happens in our community in general, we create something, then another community goes out, monetizes it, 
and then sell us it back to us. Once they validate it, they'll yeah. let, they'll tell us it's good. When we created it to begin with, mm -hmm. they sell it back to us. We buy it from them. It's the same thing that's happening in art They'd now like, too. <laughs> good stuff, black people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. And, and then we and then we'll go buy. Then we'll say it is. Yeah, good. Yeah. Matter of yeah. fact, it tastes better since you taste it. Right. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. I, I saw that a while ago, exactly. but I didn't know it was good. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, let me yeah. ask you about this though. Y'all both say y'all have a background in engineering. Like, what was that experience like being a black engineer? You know, it was or a black a, man with it. You know, in yeah, the engineering it, field. In in uh, in school is very. It was very different than when we graduated. So we got out of school and went to work in corporate. And you now you're the only black person. Right. So you go from being where it's like all black people, and now you're the only one. You kind of tr you're trying to represent for that. And um, but being an engineer in the beginning, and in engineering, like both of our careers while we were working corporate kind of moved away from engineering. You get into more business stuff and stuff later on. But doing that, it was always trying, you still have to go out and you gotta prove yourself because right. you went to a HBCU. You know, people looking at like, can he really do what, you know, can he do what I did? I went to MIT or I went to Georgia Tech. And then people start finding out, you're just as good as they are. Yeah. Even though you went to this school that they didn't, they've never heard of. So it was, it, it was one of those experiences where you were prepared, like, like being an engineer from Tuskegee, we were prepared for all this stuff. We were prepared for business. We were prepared for that corporate world. And so, so it, made it, it made it easy to get through it, but you still had those hurdles of trying to prove yourself to people along the way in, right. that, in that space. So would y'all say art is considered the family business at this point? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's what's up. Definitely. Yeah. Y'all have kids? You know. Yeah, I got. I, I have three. They artists too. Yeah, the two. My That's dope. Keep that yeah, shit yeah, in yeah. the family. Yeah, yeah. Hey, keep that shit in the family, man. Yeah. So tell me more about the gallery, though. The actual. So thing. in like so, we we partnered. So our business partner Troy Taylor, uh, we met him along the way doing exhibitions and things like that. We met Troy, and then we did an exhibition with Troy. Troy already had the gallery. Right. And uh, after the show, it was a successful show. And uh, we, you know, we specifically work with African American artists, artists of the African diaspora. And so, after the show, you know, we were talking back with Troy, and Troy's also an engineer. And he was like, you know what? In life, it's important to do well, but it's more important to do good. I want to do good with y'all. And we formed a company called H and T Art Partners. So we took our our business at the time was Premier Art, and his business Zukai Gallery created H and T Art Partners, and then we all became business partners inside the gallery. And now we're the largest African American art gallery in the Southeast. Let me ask you this. That's yeah. When you say it was a su successful show, what does that mean for the people who don't know what it so means? So when we say we talk success now, I'm, just, I'm talking about straight money, like sales. Like we, we sell work. You so know? We all because the when we first started all this, like when we were going out, you know, we, when we first started, we were using our corporate dollars to rent out gallery spaces. We say, look, give us three days. We'd be up in Buckhead. We'd be up uh, Miami Circle, those areas over there. We'd take a gallery. We said, look, if you take down all your stuff, how much would it cost us to have your gallery for three days? We go in that first day and hang a show. And then we would invite all our friends. At the time, we were in our 20s, right? So like 25, 26 years old, nobody was talking to us, though. We all had money. We, you know, we had, bought our first houses, all that kind of stuff. And nobody was talking to us about this stuff. You go into a gallery, nobody even speak to you. So it's like, well, we know who our market is. It's us. Right. And can't nobody talk to us like us. So we started selling work in that one weekend. Whoa, whoa, whoa. artwork, artwork. Yeah. <laughs> it's artwork. That's artwork. artwork. You right? That's That's artwork. Hey, but you know, you can use drugs in art as long as it's, it's art. Artistic. You can paint with cocaine. Long as it's not a cocaine based paint. <laughs> We start that painting ain't gonna last long. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna have, have to put that bitch in the thick end. Bro, let me ask you this. <laughs> Bulletproof. This, this on some black man shit. What's some of the coldest art you have seen that the world should have, that you think the world should have seen? Is it like one piece that you'd be like, I can't believe that it was only one of them? Well, you know, because it's, everything is one of a kind, well, it, well, that's, that happens all the time, you know, in the gallery. And you always find something that you love. We got, um, I mean, a lot of artists in there now. My, my biggest thing is we try to pull in work that I think at this point other people are going to like and buy. So, like, the average price point in the gallery ranges anywhere from about $1,500 up to about $40,000. Uh, right now, that's currently on the walls. And so it's a range of it. So what we want to do 
It just normalized the price of it in general, the value of it in general. Right. So we have clients come in and saying, like, you know, if you first look at something, you say, ooh, that's expensive. You're basing off the fact that you may not just be familiar with it. So it's almost like if you go and look, if you go to the store tomorrow, you go to Walmart, you can buy a purse, or you can go to Louis Vuitton and buy a purse. They're both purses, but it costs way different, right? right? So what we do is we'll come in and just by normalizing, I mean, somebody comes in and says that paint is expensive, and I might say, you got on a $4,000 handbag. Is this painting really expensive? It's cheaper than that handbag. It's going to outlive that handbag. You may have had a handbag next year. And so the idea behind it is that it's not saying don't do what you already do. We're just saying consider this also. And we got to start caring more about our car. We're like, like the fact that we got to be told to care about our own stuff, right. that's part of the problem, right? So like, how do we fix that part of it? How would an artist submit something to to you? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, what's so, that? What's that process? So, an artist, the way it, the Ooh, way it a works. a lot of artists. Yeah. yeah. So, on our website, you can go and submit zukaigallery.com. You can. There's an artist submission form on there, and you can go and submit your work. We ask for two or three pieces from you, a bio, and then we'll re we review those over time, and then figure out kind of who we want to work with. We also look for artists all the time. So we'll be on Instagram or wherever looking for artists that we can bring in to the space. Some. And so um, I don't know what you call art. <laughs> hey man, my art may my view is very long with the range when it comes to art. You know, and, and the thing is, we look for a lot of um, we look for a few things. One, we look at the artists and what materials they're using. We want to make sure that they're using stuff that's archival because we're talking about this stuff lasting forever. Right. So if you got house paint on a piece of plywood, that might not that might not necessarily live forever. Right. It could be and dope. So it, it, it might be, be a dope wood. piece. Yeah. Yeah, but it might not necessarily. You so did say you had some fifteen hundred dollars shit. Yeah, yeah, we do. We do. Don't, don't talk bad about fifteen hundred dollars shit. Uh, nobody trying to buy <laughs> shit. I might just stay up in the front door with the fifteen hundred dollars shit. I'm like, this is nice enough. I, 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 I like the $1,500. Don't shit. buy that shit. I'm man. not going back to buy the $40,000 shit. Bad. I don't understand yet. I'm going to tell you, your paint, <laughs> I got to buy two or your three paint's gonna have bed bugs. <laughs> Your paint's going to have bed bugs. Your paint's going to have bed bugs for that, for that, for that three and under. <laughs> now I'm going to be small. I'm going to be small. Ashtrays and shit. The keychains. I like that kind of art. You don't do no little shit. You ain't got no mugs. You ain't got no stickers. Bro, you ain't got no mugs. What about a tumbler? You know what I'm Like a four by six? Or yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> like, you know, why the tax? Like, you was. <laughs> Do y'all ever have problems with like older people, like aunties and shit coming in there? Ma'am, you can't take pictures of this. I'm sorry, baby, I didn't mean to. <laughs> we want everybody to take it. We, we want you to post it on Instagram. Really? Oh, yeah. We have everybody come in and take pictures. Yeah, all that, please. Yeah. I've been I've been to art galleries where you weren't supposed to take pictures. Yeah. And yeah. my my Instagram picture is of me in front of Basquiat that I wasn't supposed to take pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and I told my brother, like, <laughs> But you know what's wrong with that? <laughs> well, the thing is, when we talk about the experience we're trying to create in the gallery, what we're trying to do is create something that's different from those art galleries like you're talking about. Yeah, because so they we, make it stuffy. Yeah, and, 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 and from what that. I hear, it's all hype to get the price up. They yeah. pushing certain shit because they want, it's not, it's not the it's not the people but making it. What's it. crazy though, anybody can push the price up. That's why we got more get more black people involved in it. Because right now, they'll even, they're even telling us now who's the popular black artist. Because what they do is they go into the auction Tell houses. Tell them me. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them me, bro. Man, we got some rare Carlos Miller shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this shit is exhilarating. And you know what, though? That's all it really takes for a lot of them. What they do is they'll get a writer, the, the museum. Well, we ain't, right now, we ain't in control of it. That's yeah. the thing. We got to be in control of it yeah, all. Yeah, I saw the shit on Netflix about them selling the fake art. Yeah. And... Yeah. They sold 80 million worth of fake art. They had a dude that could do all these art styles. Yep. And these people was just buying it like, it's on tour, it's going to places, and it's like, man, this shit. He was is... making fakes, yep. 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 Yeah. yeah, that yep. happens, that, that can happen. I mean, so it's, that's one of the things that's in the, in the art world is just not regulated. Bro, have and you so... seen some of that Michael Jackson art? So, what you mean, Michael Jackson? <laughs> like, the shit that no, he, he no, did? No, no, I have not seen it. No. See, I thought she was deep in the <laughs> Bro, Michael Jackson, an artist, man. Like I a, believe like, it. You've seen some of the Swiss B shit? Yeah, I've seen Swiss B. Yeah, yeah I've seen his collection. Yeah, his collection yeah. No, the shit he did. 
I, I seen um I hadn't seen any specific pieces that he did. I know he's a big collector though. I unfollowed this nigga. He's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I had to unfollow this dude. He, his life is too great, man. Yeah, I follow him because yeah, I like, unfollow him. I don't need to see all of that, bro. Yeah. So we got some prominent collectors in the culture. We yeah, got like Swiss Beats. Yeah, Jay Z, of course. Yeah, tell you he got forty million in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know yeah. What yeah. Uh, Coach K. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. He, Coach K. He, Coach he, 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 here in the city. He told yeah. Blue to lean on it because she own it. <laughs> mm. Blue just won a Grammy. I'd have got a woman. <laughs> Get your ass off that goddamn! And it don't even be the it just be the black Jesus picture. <laughs> I got an ass woman for sitting on the couch with some plastic on it. <laughs> go in that room. Up. Go in that room. You ain't supposed to go in. Yeah. That was with, with that's the back exactly. lines. Exactly. Bro, give me some art game right quick. What's some of your favorite pieces? Like historical art pieces. Give me some of that game. I know you got it because you went to school on a scholarship. <laughs> You know, in, in terms of like what I like, I like a lot of um, the, the artists that we carry are the ones that I'm really st I'm collecting right now. Right. And so it's about it changes over time. You know, you collect different stuff at different periods in your life. Um, but if I if I look historically, um, like Charles White is an artist that's one of my favorite artists. Um, and um, this stuff going hundreds of thousands now. Yeah, yeah give us yeah, some. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Give yeah. us some some so artists, black people to look up. So don't so like, say mine. Just so before, I, only ones I really know. Um, Radcliffe Bailey. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Hebrew Brantley. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Brandon English. That's my brother. You know why we <laughs> adding value? We gonna add value. So, but yeah. That's, okay. Not not give. That's all I know now. Really. That I can think off the top of the head. You got, but uh, even here in Atlanta, you got Charlie Palmer, you got uh, Jerry Lynn uh, out of Texas, you got Alfred Conte. Uh, that's got, a dope ass name. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He yeah. sound like the plug. He's a, he's a dope artist. You've stolen too. money from Alfred <laughs> Conte. <laughs> There's consequences. For Conte, us. Conte. <laughs> yeah, you got uh, Charlotte Riley Will. Aaron Henderson. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, I was like, yes, yeah, that's your daddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go. No, don't leave the family. Yeah, I didn't see this. There's something to work in, his, in this yeah, book. So my, yeah, so my father, Let me see it. from a historical standpoint, my father took a, did an entire series based on the lyrics of Negro Spirituals because he was asking the question of who made these songs. And if you think about it, most people made the songs where... They never age, got the credit never, for it. Either. Right, but they, a lot of them was under 30 years old. And they created the whole base of all American music, and we never even talk about those people. So he did about 70 paintings. They're all about five, about, uh, five feet by six feet huge paintings and what he did was he created a book about the work and so Man, this shit dope uh, those paintings are huge and, and, and each piece talks about the song and and just ingenuity behind it all you may have never left a 10 mile radius and you still that's it was funny he's everybody from uh from the neighborhood so that's what my homeboy chris who posted that piece wow. <laughs> bro i thought that was real slate <laughs> man nah that was, a, play too much. that was a picture in the backyard what's the so, what's the thing called the complete of all his work, the prominence, or what's it called? The provenance? The provenance. So the, 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 why are you, you know, on it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why I fuck with him, bro. My dog know I don't care shit. He know what type of wine to bring to the center. <laughs> That's he all. Hey, I want to make sure I get it right, because yeah. I'm going to go in there, bitch. I want to see the provenance. <laughs> Clayton English know what a seven for is, man. So, <laughs> the provenance is like the birth certificate of the painting. So every time you buy a, a piece an original work of art you want to make sure you get the birth the uh, provenance because what that does is that proves that you that you got it it proves that you what you paid for it it shows the materials the artists all of that right. so that's where the value is it's in that piece of paper because you right. had that paper like yeah. that's like if you had a picasso and you had a paperwork on it the the, the estate can be like that's not real yeah. And it could be worth three hundred million dollars but yeah that's what they did with my picasso to. believe it or not <laughs> Mine too. just check that out that's dope <laughs> so we published that it's book hard. last year, one, because that story just needs to be told. You know, right. we need to tell the story. Where can it be who picked up, purchased? Uh, on our website, ZukaiGallery.com. Yeah. Hold, uh, hold on, say it one more time. ZukaiGallery.com. Z-U-C-O-T Gallery.com. <laughs> uh, but the story itself just it, of, of those slave poets, 
has to be told. It's, yeah. it's like, and so what we did in the book is he created, what you'll see is you'll see the song on one page and you see the piece on the next page. So the songs are songs we all know, like Wade in the Water. And what he's doing is he's talking about the true meaning in those songs and what they're, the messages that were yeah. in them and why they sang them when they sang Yeah, because they was and like so, Wade in the Water and they was like, it's a nigga named Wade. <laughs> <laughs> They, they, my cousin. They was asking that. where he was. Wade. Where's Wade? Wade in the water. Wade in the water, children. God gonna trouble the walk. But y'all know the song. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you think about it, they couldn't the read or write, so the song survived all this time, and we're the descendants what if of the that's people all that survived. Cast? What if all <laughs> slaves knew how to read it, right? I know. What if, what if, as soon as they got out of work, now look, you got to learn how to read. <laughs> crazy, don't don't tell be. nobody. That probably is true. Crazy crazy is. Part Once they find out true. you know how to read, you, you know. a lot of them white people couldn't read. That's the thing. Are you reading? <laughs> what does this say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I thought it said no caffeine. <laughs> Get out of here before I can whip you. <laughs> <laughs> what if you was a house slave and then you master getting ready to go to bed and he know you know how to read, but he ain't said shit like, come here. <coughs> <coughs> read me a bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, read me a bedtime. <laughs> Break it up. <laughs> what you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to read. Figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> read it aloud. He said, read it aloud. <laughs> read it when you are. But that's dope. We don't get, we don't get talked about. And really, that's the foundation for music. American music is all black music. Yep, it's all okay from that. that. came from that. Came from yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. Rock, rap, everything else came from. It. Yeah. But think about it, every, all the artists in there tell different stories. You got another guy, Horace from Hotel, who does more modern stuff, right? Like you know, talks about now. But my whole thing is that it all connects back, and it's telling our story. But you go to a lot of these white galleries, there'd be some somebody in there telling our story, Bro, telling it wrong. That's what makes yeah. me so mad about being black. We don't never get to make up none of our history. Nope. Yeah, it's exactly. always told to us. Yeah. Bro, white people will make up some history and then make a whole fucking show about it. And we believe it. <laughs> yeah. We'll watch it. <laughs> yeah. And believe everything they say. Bro, we gotta start making up shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, we can separate it from the real shit, but man, we can make our shit a little better too, man. White people history look like Star Wars and shit. We can feel no bad parts. I remember when it first started, Neo showed up. <laughs> We fought our way to the future. <laughs> they did do that with George Washington. He never told a lie. <laughs> never yeah, told yeah. a lie. He, he had wooden it. teeth. Yeah. Yeah. He had <laughs> Negro teeth. He yeah, had human teeth in his mouth. Yeah. Taken out of Negro <laughs> mouths. Yeah. Hey, he never, he didn't tell his lies directly, though. He had people to lie for him, so. <laughs> See, that was a man with a wig on. Nigga, you're lying. Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> that goes for anybody at home, too. I wish I could just go back in time just to hear a nigga disagree with that. That's the lionest motherfucker I ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> don't goddamn hide me. Then it's time to get paid. <laughs> he don't want a goddamn. The lionest. Oh, that the happens. lionest motherfucker you ever wanted to see. <laughs> Same story told now. <laughs> hey, that's why they only gonna put him on the quarter, because he only tell a little bit of the truth. <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, Whatever. <laughs> we ain't shit. But we artistic, though. Bro, you got some artistic shit you could play? Some futuristic art. Like, like, just imagine we at the art gallery, and we've been there for about an hour, the wine kicking in. The girl, look, uh, slip keeps slipping down. Titty about to pop out, but she a little tips out the wine. She keep grabbing this part of her shirt. I don't know why they don't never wear a bra to the art gallery. Then it seemed like your girl lose weight when she started drinking wine. Her clothes start fitting funny. Nipple keeps slipping she out. Like, look, I, <laughs> why are you slipping? Why are you slipping? They're <laughs> drinking. Oh, that dress wasn't that damn big when we left the house. <laughs> You're walking on it. <laughs> okay, that's stupid. We, this has nothing to do with art, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's art. <laughs> this is what we gonna play at the gallery. <laughs>
Bro, what type of shit? Would, like, at what occasion would this would this be playing in the gallery? This is all about uplifting black people, don't you? Don't you about Mexico, bro. This is different. Hey, that shit he was that shit he was just playing is like Prince was like, leave that for J-O-N. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, go back to that shit, go back. Hey, I wanna leave a little gift. <laughs> so, what do you think about the beat? Do you like it? <laughs> yeah, it's cool, slave. <laughs> you can have it. If you look to your left, you'll see a rare black Michelangelo. <laughs> Only one of one. It's for sale, but it's not for sale. <laughs> We stole it back from a colonizer. <laughs> keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. So you don't touch that. Right yourself, <laughs> Raffaello. From the largest art gallery in the southeast. Keep walking, keep walking. We have a portrait of Madame Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> from an artist from the east side, under Kate. It's a one of one piece. We call it The View. <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg. We'll open up the bins at $1,500. Shut up, bro. This is a $40,000 oh. piece, but we want to get rid of it, make room in the collection. Keep walking, keep walking. Keep walking. We're going to stop and get some more wine. Feel free to mingle about as we commence the walking of the gallery. Y'all ever need a nigga to do that? Yeah, I would take your ass away. You high. I would take the hat off and be bald head. Come on. Carry on. We're going to walk around and see some rare pieces today. Some of my real partners <laughs> from the Swartz. It's an artistic piece. Three little girls walking to the store. Candy Lady Shorty. <laughs> Gonna open up the bins on Candy Lady Shorty. Five thousand, you five thousand, you back, please. <laughs> keep walking. Keep That's walking. a good name. Yes, for a piece yes. Candy yes, that Shorty. Cadillac is for sale. Keep walking. Painted on the west side. This is titled "My Partner Them." <laughs> this is the rare Cadillac, 1977, owned by Rick James. Yes, that is gold interior. That is real gold. We're gonna open up the bids at $75,000. <laughs> Rick James Cadillac going once. It's some Atlanta art need to be captured though. Oh like, my just God. Some local shit. It's always yeah, more, it's yeah. more Atlanta artists, I think, than Feel free, Shorty. Smoke in the gallery. Yes, please roll up. Please roll up. Keep walking. <laughs> shorty folk, you're more than welcome, Shorty folk. Come on, Shorty folk. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go have some refreshments. <laughs> Quick comedy set for my man. You know him and you love him. Shorty, shorty. <laughs> no, that's enough. That's enough. I'm through being artistic, bro. I know, I'm sorry. When y'all want to do something, bro, we need a nice space where we can hang some of our fan art and do our own little uh, gallery, bro. Yeah, we, we need to collab with y'all. Yeah, we ain't going to waste y'all time. Nah, we can but just keep in mind, we, we do shop in the $1,500 section. <laughs> <laughs> We so can. we might not be able to get the whole gallery. Can we get a wall and just I put a lot of shit on one I wall? Up. I go up the two. And he know what the shit, the receipt called too, so that shit. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, yeah, he gotta make sure you know he's sitting there describing. I'm like, nigga, receipt. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga will come back and be like, where the problem on? <laughs> <laughs> nigga, you didn't get the problem on. <laughs> Let me see the motherfucking problem on. <laughs> what the problem is that? Give me the goddamn bill of sale. <laughs> where the paint slip? <laughs> so you mean to tell me that JJ didn't paint this? <laughs> this ain't an authentic good time. Okay, oh, all right. Mm -hmm. Hell no. All right, man. Oh, man. Well, look, let them know where they can find y'all online and all of those good things. So we're well, we're located in Castleberry. Uh, actually, that's far from here. Uh, and uh, online, uh, the website zucotgallery.com. Z u c o t. We love that, yeah, yeah. Zucot Gallery, Z-U-C-O-T Gallery.com. You can also see some of the work that we have and some of the events that we do. This is a real coffee Instagram. table book. It is. That, that you can learn something. A lot of times, coffee table books be on some bullshit. Yeah. They just show you windows right. or doors or some dumb shit. But this shit, I like this. Right. I'm getting this. I like, like when I'm at my coffee table, I actually drink coffee on it. There's no need to have a coffee table that you're not drinking coffee on. You ain't never put no, if you ain't got no little coffee rings, 
I mean, if you have a living room table, that's fine. But if you go out and, and you look at your motherfucking provolone and that bitch say coffee table, <laughs> if the providence say coffee table, hey, well, make sure you drink some coffee on that bitch. How much would I get for a red four-eyes sticker that I peeled off the back of the side? <laughs> Cause that's it. It's that's, rare though, right? That's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. It lasts. You see your four eyes buy it back from you. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey man. Well look, we appreciate y'all coming through and updating us on what's going on in the art world. And shit, one day I'm gonna get me some. Come see us. Man. I want a rare Michelangelo. You ain't gonna get that from us though. Uh, <laughs> you ain't finna get that from. I've been one You going to talk to the Pope. <laughs> I've been wanting to ask somebody in the art business though, is like, how valuable is just like a titty picture? Depend on who painted it. There you go. And who, <laughs> and who bought it? And who bought it? Okay, I, I get it. That's the research I want to know. I want to know the most one. expensive picture with somebody titty. I give you one. What if it's the original Andre 3000 AT alias? Painting with the titties out in the in the green they call light the on. Cover, the yeah, but cover. it's the actual painting and it's done by him. You know, it because it's done by him, it will be worth something. Like I like art, how you think. So the the he the, too realistic. <laughs> there's, there's no value in that. <laughs> <laughs> keep walking, keep walking. <laughs> because it was done by, but like you like you were saying, like if it's just the who the artist whoever painted it actually creates the value in it. Whoever painted it and who collected it. Yeah. So if it's sit, if it's a painting that's sitting in an uh, entertainer's collection, it'll be worth more than if it's just sitting in somebody else's collection. Could be they they can increase the value. Then when you take it, when you have it as a collector and you take it to an auction, it creates value. This was All owned by James business. Brown. I've been holding yeah. out on you. <clears throat> I own some art. It's a yeah. picture of me and Rick James. He got his hand over my shoulder like he's telling me, "Keep doing your thing." It's valuable to me. <laughs> Favorite piece of art I ever had. Besides that piece right there, that shit cold. That is cold. That could yeah. go, that could go in the fifteen hundred dollar section. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. But it, it, it's that's just what we. If they don't meet the reserve. Marvin Gaye. We, that's not for sale. <laughs> keep you not walking, selling. Keep walking. You ain't selling the Marvin Gaye, bro. But you'll sell that. I said that we could we could probably work something out. <laughs> I know the artist been wanting to get into a bigger form. My partner did that. Okay. He's an artist and a barber and a, and he do album covers. And okay. I think he's an engineer or something. I don't know. <laughs> he might be. <laughs> He's trying to relate. Everybody an engineer. <laughs> he do software and, and stuff of that nature. I know a lot of people. But now that we got the art plug, see you like that one. You see that? <laughs> J-O-N, he back in. <laughs> Yeah, but now we plugged in in the art. We got the t-shirts. This is my one, though. They could be also purchased <laughs> online, too, because we said, you know, people, like, a lot of people, that's how they I like that material. Us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But this the one. Y'all got a hit right here. Custodian of culture. It's in our custody. Come on, man. We got to keep it. Hey, yeah, yeah. Check the program yeah. on. <laughs> 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 I got a question. How do artists give the galleries make money off Commissions yeah. from selling yeah. the art. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. So we, That's when the thought. artist comes in, we sign a contract with the artist, and um, we know, invest in them. We invest in them. We, right. we do all marketing. We handle gotta, that. Gotta we pay that gallery fee. Travel, all that kind of Hanging stuff. Hanging fee. Right? So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Storage fee. <laughs> Shipping all fee. All that. <laughs> fee yeah. fee. Mortgage. And it costs money. <laughs> when you start selling expensive things, it costs money to sell. Yeah. So yeah. you know, you taking people out to dinner, whatever you got to do to sell. Or traveling around trying to get stuff moved, all that stuff costs. I love how y'all came on here and let everybody know that, that everybody was welcome at the art gallery and in the art world, man. So that's big for the culture, and we appreciate y'all coming through, man, showing that. Appreciate you so. having us, man. I'm going. We going to the art I'm gallery. Going. Baby, I'm going. get your wig together. I'm going to get into this box. 85 South Show, the coolest podcast. <laughs> yeah, man. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all, man. Appreciate it, man. Thank y'all. Appreciate you, man.